Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fasting and Detox for Better Health with Elson Haas, MD. I'm your host, Angela Murphy, and we are so pleased to have Dr. Haas with us. For those of you who are not familiar with Dr. Haas, he is a physician and has been for over 40 years practicing in Marin County, California. Um, he's an author of over 11 books, and he has um, been doing these online courses for over three years now. And we're so pleased to have him help us with our detoxing and uh, fasting before the holidays. Welcome, Dr. Haas. Thank you, Angela. Hello, everyone. Well, here's one of my favorite topics I've been uh, talking about and doing for uh, since the mid 1970s. And I think it's really, I've often said that uh, detox and cleansing is the missing link in Western nutrition. And it's so important for our health and vitality. And as we age, and I'll, I'll share a couple things with you that you know, really relate to that because we're getting a little bit more research. And actually this class was inspired from the Woman's World article about a German study where people were doing uh, a DASH diet, which is uh, a diet to stop hypertension. And some of them did a five-day juice and liquid cleanse, juice soup cleanse, and that helped their, uh, their overall health and their, and their gut biome. And they just, you know, they felt healthier. There was also a study a few years ago that Harvard uh, School published uh, where intermittent fasting, which is also occasional cleanses, uh, really improve the health and longevity. Uh, and I've been reading for you know many years about uh, studies in animals where they underfed them, and that was really something that changed their longevity and their health. And you know, during these many groups that I've done over uh, 40, 45 years, because I have done uh, prior, I would do several detoxes in my clinic, Preventive Medical Center in you know, San Rafael, California. And I would have groups of 20 or 30 of my patients who you know, we'd all go through cleaning up our diets and doing some detox or doing a spring juice cleansing, which I've done every year since you know, my first one in 1975. And I'll share with you a little bit about what happened, what got me inspired about that. Uh, so the German study really set off the, this article and uh, saw that you know people's health improved. And I've seen that in thousands of people over the years that aches and pains go away and all these different areas that I'll, that I'll share with you, you know, in a moment. Uh, so it definitely is an, an important uh, factor. Uh, my first cleanse I did, I went to hear, uh, it was actually a master cleanse. I don't know if any of you have done that. I'll ask you a few questions shortly here, but. Uh, I did a 10-day lemonade diet, which is lemon juice, maple syrup, cayenne pepper. I went to hear a man who wrote this little booklet. Uh, his name was Stanley Burroughs, and he gave a talk uh, in San Francisco. And, you know, I, I was out, fresh, you know, pretty fresh out of medical school, uh, you know, in, into practice for a couple of years. And, you know, the things he was saying were a little bit, you know, anti-Western medicine, uh, more natural medicine. And, uh, he talked about doing a 10 day fast. And I, I said, how come I didn't learn any of this in medical school? I was, uh, you know, this is new, this is new to me, but you know, I was an overweight allergic medical student. I had free food all those years. I ate way too much, um, ever since I was a little boy and I still have to work on that aspect. But, uh, anyways, I started to do it. Uh, it was difficult. The first couple of days were hard. I started, you know, it was headachey, irritable, and all, all the th things that typically happen. Um, but, you know, not, more so with cleansing than with a, a detox diet. And uh, by the third day, I woke up, I could breathe clearly, and I had been congested every day for, for 20 years, you know, from my allergies. And, you know, what I realized later was more, a more congestive diet. And, uh, so I started to feel better and I started dropped like 20 pounds in that 10 days. What I, what I thought was my allergies, I realized was probably 80% congestion. 
as I started to breathe better and have better energy and vitality, sleep better. I started sleeping an hour or two less a night and waking up with more energy than I had before. So it really, you know, was a dynamic experience. And then uh, I started writing about it in the town paper that, you know, where I was living in Northern California. And I said, you know, if anybody wants to do that, I will kind of guide you. I started to realize that, you know, doing it was enough for me to have that experience and feel good and, and uh, learn about it. And I was also then started reading about um, cleansing, which I realized went back, you know, centuries and some of the popular natural medicine um, you know, gurus back then was Pablo Arola and Bernard Jensen and, you know, and herbalists and all the things that I, I started studying after I realized that, you know, I didn't learn everything in medical school that I needed to really help take care of people, especially to improve people's health. I learned how to treat disease, but, you know, that, and that's really what my career has been about how to keep people healthy, stay healthy is my, has been my motto. Um, so I started using cleansing in my practice, you know, when I saw somebody overweight and congested, high blood pressure, uh, I said, okay, well, let's do a cleanse. And I've had, and people were routinely getting good results. I did a group of 30 people uh, in this, this house overlooking the, you know, San Francisco Bay, you know, and, and people started to have powerful experiences they influence over that summer uh, a couple hundred more people in the town where I was working in practice you know and living uh, and I just would see people and they would have a glow about them and and this glow that happens when you start to cleanse is, is really beneficial and it just you know it corrects so many issues some of you saw women's world this is just the article that's there it goes into the you know, the study that showed that the microbiome, the, the digestive tract and other factors were improved with people. Um, they were doing a, a five day liquid, you know, juice or soup uh, cleanse and they got much improvement and they improved their weight loss and all that. And then the Harvard study, um, you know, which came out in 2017. It was a long, long scientific paper, but it's really showed that people improve their health. And intermittent fasting is both, you know, occasional cleanses, but it's also a, a new approach, you know, in the last couple of years that have been as popular, popularized, uh, where people only eat an eight hour or 10 hour period through the day. And they go from say 6 p.m. to you know, 8 a.m. in the morning or, you know, where they don't, no, they're not eating, they're just drinking. So I share with you my experience and, and how influential it's, it has been. And as I say, most people improve their health and they make habit changes. And that's what I want to talk to you about so in this overview of cleansing detox. Okay. So there's a lot of benefits when we do detox and I'll go through several different types of, of programs that you can do but people feel better. They, they get rid of the water. Uh, they, pee, they pee a lot of, in the first days often. Uh, improves energy, uh, less allergies and congestion. You know, and when we're, when we're taking this break, we're getting away from some of the junk that a lot of us eat. You know, when I work with young people, especially in families, they said there's a big difference between real food and treats. And so you really want to focus on 90% real food in your diet. And treats are occasional, and that's mostly packaged food, sodas, uh, you know, and getting away from the two most common vegetables that people eat in our country, which are French fries and ketchup, uh, you know, tomato. But they really, we want to get really fresh vegetables, and that's, you know, that's part of the key. So also, we get away from, we get past our habits and cravings, and we get a reduction in inflammation. And we really reduce our, you know, arthritis pains and all those, you know, headaches. Uh, you, your skin gets clearer. You feel better, and, and it's really a, a motivation um, to help improve your overall well-being. And I think it really uh, changes the incidence of chronic disease. I know for myself, if I 
uh, was still eating the diet that I grew up on. Uh, if I was alive, I'd be on multiple medicines. I'd have, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and all that stuff. And, and I don't have those things. So uh, when you signed up for this class, you were given, uh, you were sent a 14 page uh, in, info from the detox diet book on why it's important to detox, how to get ready for it, and uh, other aspects that I'll go through. So I have a few questions for all of you and you can answer in in the chat. So one is, did you all get that and how many of you really looked at the, the detox uh, handout that we sent you? Uh, so that's one question. And another is, have you done detoxes or cleanses before? I imagine a lot of you have an interest in this because you've uh, done some kind of detox before. And are you ready now? So this is the time. There's a lot of different ways to do it. You can do a few days just to reset yourself. You can do a few weeks even to help you really make some habit changes and to go from there. All right, I'm seeing some people have done master cleanse. I've seen some names on people I've, I've seen before, I've known before. All right. So one of the things in your handout is, uh, is it appropriate for you to detox? Uh, so there's this questionnaire. I'm not going to go through all this now, but it really, you know, do you have habits, certain habits that you need to take a break from? Um, do you have any of these health issues under medical symptoms, other factors? You know, and realize that detox is not just food. Sometimes it's a detoxing from news, detoxing from our computers or phones, taking a break from the electromagnetic exposures that we have. Uh, we all have different hooks that, that occupy us and that some of that undermine our health. So uh, here's, um, so that's one aspect here. So you could do this and you can make yourself a score and just see how important it is or show it to your significant other or your kids and, you know, see uh, oftentimes just looking at your habits and your score on this test is a, a motivation. So here's, I wanna share with you kind of where I come from, why I think that detox is so important. You know, a healthy body has uh, all the nutrients get they're getting in and not a lot of toxins. So to me, disease starts in our cells. And that's when, our, when we don't get enough of the nutrients we need. That's vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty acids, and the phytonutrients that are what give food and fr you know, fresh foods, their smell, their color, their taste. Um, the other side of it is that we want to avoid toxins, chemicals and metals that get into our air, food and water, or that we use on our body and our hair. Um, and so basically, if we just did, uh, you know, everyone across the country and we say, okay, we're going to make sure we're getting good nutrients in, uh, and that may, you know, need support with supplements as well. And we're going to avoid as many toxins as we can. So much of our health will get better. So that's, to me, kind of the first level of understanding health and healing, because we heal when we kind of rebalance this. So those who really are, can benefit from detox are anybody with inflammatory or pain issues, back pains, et cetera. I've seen a lot of people do my detox programs and their aches and pains get better. People come in and they say, yeah, I'm waking up. I'm much more flexible. My fingers aren't stiff. My back isn't stiff. Uh, those with allergies and congestion. And to me, it's really an important process. When we eat the certain diet uh, that's part of our Western culture, uh, you know, meat and potatoes and baked goods and packaged with flour and sugar product, we start to develop problems. And I say, you know, I have many uh, middle-aged men in my practice, particularly, they have high blood pressure, they have high cholesterol, they have early diabetes. When we work on our health and we get to the core, the, the source, the core of these issues, uh, we can reverse those chronic problems. And that's where, to me, detox is, is so valuable. And I know, uh, you know, some of the shows that have done uh, detox programs are seeing lots of benefits. I know Dr. Oz has been supportive of that, you know, other, other, uh, other shows have been as well but you know this has been become more popular you know since i started doing this back you know in the 70s 
And it really is, a, to me, one of the greater healing paths that you can follow. So, so uh, we're going to go some, through some of the ideas. But, uh, you know, is detox right for everyone? No. I mean, if you're, if you're already depleted, if you need more nourishment, you know, that's the key. If you're fatigued, underweight, uh, you, you know, sometimes issues like anemia or low thyroid, you know, uh, pregnant women, nursing women, you have to pay attention to what you need. Because remember, your health has to do with getting all the nutrients in that you need and avoiding things that undermine your health. So a lot of these situations of, you know, especially if somebody is overweight, I mean, underweight, uh, they need more nourishment, they need more calories. And I see people who, who need that as well. So there's a lot of different uh, programs that you can do. Um, so one is you can come to intermittent fasting. I'm going to talk about that a moment because it's really a popular program right now. Um, and basically, as I mentioned earlier, it's eating basically eight to 10 hours out of the day. So you're only eating food, say from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, or, you know, or if you'd like eating early, then you start at 8 a.m. and, you know, go to 4 or 6 p.m. Uh, and you're eating wholesome, wholesome food. You're eating lots of veggies, good quality protein, uh, and the like. Um, now, also, you can reset yourself with short-term uh, juice cleanses, even a few days, or it could just be a vegetable broth, a vegetable soup. Uh, but you just take a break from a couple of days. You get away if you're if you're habituated to caffeine and alcohol or sugar, things like that. You take a break from those. You know, but the real way to kind of transition and work on yourself is to take you know a two to three week program where you get away from your food and substances and give your body a little break. Uh, from that zone. Uh, and I want to go through uh, a few ideas of the detox diet, uh, you know, a smoothie or, or juice cleanse, and then talk about master cleanse for a minute. So number one, I have this acronym that is part of the, the detox diet book. It's called SNACKS, S-N-A-C-C. -C. So that stands for sugar, nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, chemicals. Okay. Now I've, you know, up until the last couple of years, I used to travel around and lecture at conferences and, and uh, you know, conventions and things like that. And when I would ask the audience, uh, it could be, you know, 30 people or a couple thousand people, raise your hand if you're not habituated to any one of these substances. You're not too sugar daily, you're not smoking, you're not on alcohol daily or caffeine or, or chemicals. I would say that it was less than 5% of people were clear of that. Most people do some kind of stimulation in the day and then some kind of sedation later. Um, so when we do too much sugar, it affects our mood and energy, can throw the hormones off. Uh, you know, when nicotine is a more um, inflammatory, toxic, can, you know, carcinogenic uh, substance. Uh, alcohol causes weight gain, affects the brain and the liver. Um, it affects our sugar metabolism because alcohol is a quick, a quick uh, assimilated sugar, so it puts weight on people easily. Uh, caffeine uh, causes blood pressure rises. It's an acidic substance. It can irritate the gut. It can affect your sleep. It affects you know it affects your energy. So when we get dependent on these things, it's an issue. You know when we're exposed to chemicals, that's toxins. You know cell damage, uh, etc. So we want to be uh, aware of taking being able to take a break i mean the message i have in the detox diet is you know all these substances have some level of benefit they you know they help people feel better in some ways but they also have issues and usually the issues are greater you know in medicine whenever you look at anything you're doing you always have to look at what's the benefit what's the risk you know, so what's the what's the benefit you get from using these substances and how are you using them? Are you starting to use them every day? Is your body dependent on them for energy? So I also often have people at least take a break from uh, wheat and flour products and dairy products. Part of it often uh, in my detoxes, I get people away from any kind of packaged foods and uh, red meats, fried foods, etc. So let me share the detox diet. Okay, so uh, you'll have that you have that in your in your handouts uh, and you'll be able to go through the slides as well and and review them 
But you know, basically on the detox diet, which is a simple way to kind of alkalinize your body to calm down the acid inflammatory state, uh, help drop a few pounds, get rid of extra water, help improve your digestive tract. Because part of it is, uh, and this is, applies to all levels of nutrition, is chew your food well. You know, if we eat too fast, we eat too much. We tend to eat too much when we eat too fast. Uh, we we need to kind of slow down so that our our brain and our taste buds and our stomach are in line. Um, you know, so we want to you know eat uh, you know what feels good and and slow ourselves down a little bit so we're really tasting our food. Uh, in my recent course I just did with, on you know healing our emotional relationship to food, it, it has to do a lot with being present when you're eating and not being distracted, which might be a conversation or watching TV or things like that. The more you're aware of that, especially when you're having any treats, you know, any kind of dessert, you know, one or two bites is, you know, really the fulfilling component. You don't need to eat a whole piece of cake or that, even though it's, you know, very easy to do. So when you get up in the morning on the detox diet program, you, you have a couple glasses of water, you have a, half a lemon squeezed in one or both glasses, stimulates your digestion a bit. Uh, then breakfast, you have a piece of fruit and then like a whole grain cereal, could be oatmeal, could be cream of rice. I have people, you know, again, staying away from wheat for, for temporarily. Uh, and you can mix in a little fruit with that. Uh, and you make sure you're, you know, you're getting a good bowl full, you're chewing your food well. So this is a nourishing diet. I put this, the detox diet together uh, after I did my cleanse, when I realized that cleansing is a little bit more extreme and it's not, not right for all people, nor is it right for all times of the year. And that's why we're, we have a different program when, when the weather's colder. Uh, and then lunch and dinner is a mixture of steamed vegetables. And, and to me, this is what, and it's warming and you're saving the vegetable water and you're using that to drink with some nutrients, uh, kind of mid morning and mid afternoon, but your lunch is usually um, midday 12 to one and dinner is five to six. So this also incorporates the intermittent fasting because you're not eating at night. You're having uh, tea often, or, you know, just water, or, you know, if you really need something, you can have an apple or some you know, celery or carrot sticks, things like that. But, you know, to me, that's, that's part of the, the detox diet. Uh, and then you can also make smoothies uh, for those people who maybe need more calories even, or uh, it replaces a meal just to have uh, nutritious ingredients with protein, carbs, and some fats. Uh, that could be a little bit of oil in there, or uh, even in smoothie. Sometimes I put a scoop of peanut butter in my smoothie. Um, so it could be as a meal replacement. It's easy on the, you know, it's easier on your digestive tract. And you do want to mix your saliva a little bit with with smoothies when you're when you're consuming that. Uh, it, you know, it's actually like chewing your, your, your smoothie up because it's really more of a food than it is a drink. So make sure you're, you're thinking about that. And then there's a lot of different kinds of juice cleansing. Uh, uh, you know, it's a quicker way. It's a faster way to detox your body. You can get a fair amount of nutrients, not a lot of calories. If you're, making, if you're getting fresh juice, you would have some fiber in there as well. But uh, typically, you're, you're, when you eat the whole food, you're getting a lot more fiber that way. All right, so here's just a, a quick review, uh, and you will have these slides available to you as well. Uh, so I'm not going through them, you know, word for word, but you may want to read read these uh, separately at, at a later time. So you start off with water. You have fruit and whole grain at breakfast, lunch and dinner, or steamed vegetables, um, and they'll keep they can help keep you warm. You save the veggie water from your steaming, and as an alkaline broth, so you drink that mid morning, mid afternoon. Uh, and again, if you're doing uh, like a green powder or other nutrients, uh, you can take, you can do that with it as well. Um, smoothie cleanse, there's a piece out of uh, the book that you have, uh, which is just a way to kind of handle this. Uh, it's mainly protein, carbs, you can get some oil in there. You can use that as a meal. And then uh, the juice cleanse. Here's uh, one that you can do master cleanse. You can do for other fresh juices, veggie juices. Uh, veggie juices are you know, a little more nutritious often, but the master cleanse is interesting. Uh, let, me, let me go to that. Uh, so here's how you make master cleanse. And 
you know, it's got fresh lemon or lime juice, uh, two tablespoons per glass, uh, one tablespoon of pure maple syrup, tenth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and eight ounces of water. So it's a spicy lemonade. The lemon helps kind of tighten down the tissues a little bit, get rid of extra water, as does the cayenne pepper is a good diuretic. So you, you pee a lot when you start on Master Cleanse. Uh, the maple syrup, if it's done at a level, it's not going to be over cal caloric. It will actually help you, um, uh, give you energy. So, you know, it's a very high energy cleanse. I, I had people usually go work out and you, you know, want to go for hikes. You do a lot, lots of different things. How I make it up is I, I make, I squeeze a few lemons. I'll measure it out. I'll use about half the amount of maple syrup and add some cayenne. And I might carry that concentrate around. Like I might, if I do it, like oftentimes I'll just take it to work and do it all the way into lunchtime. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of review that a little bit. So, but you drink a couple glasses at a time, one or two glasses, and you do that morning, afternoon, and midday. Uh, you don't store it in plastic ever. You keep it in a little glass jar or you make it fresh. And make sure uh, since the lemon and the maple uh, are not great for your teeth, if, the, if you're sipping on it all day, make sure you're drinking it by the glass. And, and after each glass, you rinse your mouth with water so that protects your teeth from uh, enamel, getting the enamel pulled out. And you know, say make it fresh or carry that or carry the concentrate around because if you look, if you put the cayenne pepper in there, it actually gets a little too uh, hot. It, it heats up over the day. If you just have it in you know half a half a jar, which might be six to eight glasses of of master cleanse, then uh, it's not quite as hot. And you can use a little oil uh, in through the day, a little olive oil or flaxseed oil. Uh, let's look at supplements a little bit that you can do during detox. Now, when you're on a juice cleanse, you don't do a lot of supplements. You might do a green powder or a little bit of a powdered vitamin C. Uh, but if you're doing the detox diet, you would do a multivitamin, a one a day that's appropriate for you. Uh, you don't need, uh, for men and women who are old, past menopause, let's say, they don't need a lot of iron. So it's a different one for a woman who's having reg regular cycles. Uh, during detox, you can use an antioxidant, which might have a little extra C, D, um, selenium, zinc, uh, and other nutrients in it, alpha lipoic acid, et cetera. And you can do one of those one, once or twice a day. Uh, when I'm detoxing, I often use a buffered vitamin C. It's got a little calcium, magnesium, and potassium in it. It helps alkalinize the body. Those are alkaline minerals. Um, and I do that. And uh, and I, I mix that into a drink. So, you know, you can put that into your, if you're doing detox diet, you can put that into your vegetable water. It gives it a little more flavor. Uh, if you have uh, trouble sleeping or you have cramps, uh, you know, you, you get muscle cramps at all, you can do some calcium magnesium at night. And then herbs you can do, some people do uh, silymarin or milk thistle, which helps support the liver. Uh, a lot of different herbs you can do. You can do ginseng and the like. Uh, last year in Women's World, there was an article, I think it was called the Detox Soup. And it's one I put together. Uh, it was actually during the pandemic. I said, this is, you know, it's a little intense to do a pure juice cleanse. So if I'm trying to trim down a little bit and I'm looking at and improving my health and dropping a few pounds that I may have put on, um, then I, I started doing kind of master cleanse in the morning, take it to work with me when I was, was seeing patients. Um, and then uh, mid or, you know, all the way through lunchtime, I would do master cleanse. And then I would have either a piece or two of fruit or a fresh veggie juice in the afternoon. And then I had a vegetable soup at dinner. Uh, so that was part of uh, a kind of a, a more integrative plan that was still detoxifying uh and feeling good and it was warming and it was also very cleansing and i felt really i felt really good on that so here's my suggestion for all of you and i'm you know i'm going to tell you uh in a moment about uh a cool climate detox that we can do but you know you're listening to this you can look at it again uh, but making a plan is really important so uh, following any eating program any diet that you want to be on uh, it really helps to have your, have what you need available, write it down, make a plan. 
but making a plan is one thing, but following that plan is even, you know, is even more important, is most important. Uh, the key is just deciding what you're going to do and then following that. So the detox diet is, it takes a little bit of work because you, you know, you're steaming your veggies, you're cutting up your veggies. Um, and then making a detox soup is another way. But when I steam veggies, uh, for example, I'm putting the harder vegetables in first. I, you know, I have a, either a double uh, boil pot with a steamer on top or just a, a little inexpensive steamer you put in the bottom of a bigger pot, put water underneath it, probably a quart of water uh, at least. And then, you know, if you're putting carrot or potato or beet or something like that, the harder vegetables, you start those. Then you put, you know, things that take a little uh, less time to steam, could be green beans or broccoli, or cauliflower. And then the end, you might put zucchini. And then at the, even at the end, I'll put my leafy greens on top and let that uh, simmer down. All right, let's see. So I've covered a fair amount of uh, ideas here. And if anybody has a question, you type a uh, question into the chat. I want to take a few moments with all of you and see what you're thinking and uh, what questions you may have to help clarify anything I've said. Someone said, curious to why you say room temperature fruit. Room temperature fruit? I don't put most of my fruit in the refrigerator. Uh, unless it's going to go bad, then I'll do it and take it out. Like I do that with pears sometimes. Certain food like man mango and fruit I, uh, and, and pears, I like cold. But most of most of my fruit is, is uh, you know, I, I have a little fruit orchard at my place. So uh, I've been, doing, been just eating at room temperature. I think it's a little easier on you. No, but it really is your preference. It's not, there's not a harm to eat fruit that's cold. All right. And someone typed in, which plan do you recommend beginning with if you haven't been successful with cleanse attempts before? Okay, good question. Uh, then I would just go with uh, an elimination type diet where you're focusing on, you know, the detox diet is that you're away from the snacks, the sugar, caffeine, alcohol. I mean, you know, you have to look at where your habits are and, and write down the changes you want to make. Um, so I, I think. Uh, the detox diet, that's why I suggest that because you get to eat, you know, three meals a day, but it's slowly reducing. I mean, it won't have as intense an effect as a, as a five-day juice cleanse because you'll drop more weight and you'll have more of a dramatic change in how your body feels. But you definitely, um, you know, you can, you can see some benefits even five days of just doing, uh, you know, vegetable, vegetable soup. You know, and, you know, you want to use, you know, cabbage and, you know, zucchini and things like that. So I would just, you know, the key is the, the best plan is the one that you think you can do, uh, just like the best exercise program. If, you know, a lot of people don't like exercise, so what will work for you? Um, so, you know, that's basically what I would say is find something that you can try so that you, you're pretty sure you can be successful in. And maybe it's just getting away from three or four habits or three or four foods that you tend to crave and, and, and over consume. Um, and also you need to look at what your goals are. Is the goal to drop weight? Is the goal to reduce aches and pains, reduce congestion in your head, uh, less headaches, all that. I mean, to, to me, the process is an individual one. And we'll talk about that in a minute but just transitioning out of one way of, of eating to another. Someone asked, what if it feels like you're starving on the detox diet? Uh, well, then you eat a little more vegetables. And usually if, if people are not drinking enough water too when they're detoxing. So when you start to think about food and get hungry, just drink a couple more glasses of water. I mean, it will just help the cleansing process. So, uh, you know, and people have that, like even on... Uh, People tend to have less hunger issues when they're on a juice cleanse, really, or even master cleanse. Um, but when you're eating, you know, a few meals a day, you, you know, you might, you know, you might still have hunger because you're eating. Um, you know, you just do what you can. You know, if you need it, have an extra apple, have uh, some celery sticks, have an extra veggie juice. Uh, try and you know fill yourself up a bit. You know, and also do other things. Get outside. Go for a walk. Uh, you know, so we, you know, people who are, are food attached, like me, you know, you're thinking about food a lot, you know, what am I eating next? What, what can I do? What, you know, what's in my fridge? I got to go check it out. And that's, that was part of my creative process was not habitually going to my refrigerator and seeing what was there. Is detox a good plan for mild pancreatitis? 
Well, for my, yes. Yeah, so it may be for mild pancreatitis. Usually if it's come from alcohol, just taking a break from that, uh, it helps calm down any kind of itis. You know, that's what I've seen that, uh, you know, again, obviously you need to talk to your doctor and see, I mean, cause pancreatitis can be a serious condition. Uh, you know, so if you have questions about it, you know, you should check with your primary. Uh, how important is protein in the diet? And what sources of protein should one consume? Uh, one thing, thank you for asking that, because one thing in the detox diet, some people who are used to eating more protein can do a little protein in the afternoon. But when I originally named it, I called it the alkaline detox or the protein download, because a lot of people get congested and inflamed because they're doing too much animal protein. Um, but for those of people who need the energy and the strength, uh, and that's why when I mix in my green powder, which has amino acids in it, I mean, you need amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, because when you eat protein, your body breaks them down into amino acids, and then you build up protein from that. So uh, there's other ways to kind of get your, your protein needs without eating, you know, steaks and, and other, other high animal foods. Someone asked um, how long you recommend the master cleanse. Well, when I do the master cleanse, uh, you know, usually in the spring to summer, uh, I usually do 10 days. That's the typical recommendation, but uh, even three to five days. I, I, I don't encourage people to do a three day master cleanse because it takes to the third day to even start to feel better. I mean, if you've done it for a while, like I can even do a one day master cleanse and already and get some of the benefit you know, I'll, pee, I'll get rid of extra water retention and, uh, you know, feel better. Um, uh, depending on your body, but uh, seven to 10 days is good. People kind of go through a, a transition on the third day where they start to feel really a good smooth energy. It's kind of like I, I, I equate it to when you start doing aerobic exercise and you do it and then all of a sudden you move into that zone where, you're, well, I could go forever, you know, and, and they feel like that. And a lot of people have said, especially during master cleanse, it's like, well, I, I don't ever want to eat again. I haven't felt like this in, in, in a long, long time. So, um, and I've had people do up to 30 days of master cleanse, but, you know, I think you want to do at least five to seven days and 10 days is, was always the original recommendation from, you know, Stanley Burroughs in his, in his booklet. So. All right, you have another question. Um, this one is about diabetes and someone had also emailed in a question. So I'm gonna read theirs is, could you address um, how the detox would work for diabetics? It seems like the amount of fruit included would raise bl blood sugar. And um, she asked, she also asked about protein, same thing Eileen was asking about. You said to add protein only if you don't wanna lose weight. She wants to lose weight, but feels that protein should be included. Well, I, I agree with all that. Well, first of all, the, the detox diet doesn't have much fruit in it. So there's not a lot of sugar. I've had a lot of people with early and, 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 and active diabetes do detoxes and cleanses um, because you're doing a lot less calories and a lot less sugars, even if you're doing the little maple syrup in there. And some people with uh, diabetes can use blackstrap molasses, which is much lower in sugars, a little more nutrient rich. Um, so I've seen that and, you know, you could, you know, you could do detox diet with a little additional protein, especially if you don't need to lose a lot of weight, um, you know, because when you eat protein, you're going to start to crave more food as well. So uh, usually, uh, you know, going, you know, a low protein diet for long is not very good, but for a week, it should, it should be fine for people. Someone asked, uh, what about assuring bowel movements? Well, should you prep in advance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you go into a, de you know, a little deeper detox, we'll talk about that more. But um, yeah, you want to make sure your bowels are moving and whether that's uh, doing herbal, herbal laxatives, there's aloe vera, there's uh, senna, senna, you know, there's a lot of ones in the health food store you can get or online. Uh, some people do colonics, some people do enemas, but it's important. When people are going through a detox and they don't feel well they feel a little toxic or achy they're either not getting enough hydration they're not getting enough water um and or they're um they're not their bowels aren't moving well enough so all right well we should probably take a stop there for a minute let's all right so transitioning from any detox let's talk about that because i uh, you know you can't start something without knowing how to complete it so really coming back into your eating plan is is the most important aspect so are you willing to make some habit changes? Um, 
Uh, are you getting your hydration well? You know, what is a healthy, balanced diet? So, you know, ideally, I think most diets that people are doing, we want to focus on vegetables as your primary, you know, vegetables and quality protein. Protein, if especially if you're trying to keep your weight down or drop weight, you want to stay low on the carbs. You want to learn about glycemic index and what foods get quickly absorbed sugars. Um, you know, and then you can have a little fruit and grains and beans and nuts and seeds as making up your diet. But coming back out of any kind of cleanse or detox program, you want to slowly build, you know, uh, your program. And, you know, the ideal diet is a way to take the detox diet and enhance it and make it more balanced. Um, you know, the benefit you have about kind of uh, doing uh, a detox and elimination is to get away from uh, certain things that you may be reactive to. So one of my books, The False Fat Diet, talks about uh, food elimination and, and, um, and, you know, food allergy. And that's one of the things I center, I, I, I center on in, in my clinic, Preventive Medical Center. So, you know, common allergens are wheat and dairy, eggs, soy, uh, you know, what increases allergic reaction is, you know, too much alcohol and sugar and too much refined food as well. Uh, and also, you know, when you had health, health issues over the years and you've taken antibiotics a bunch of times or prednisone, it may alter how well you digest and assimilate and that can cause, you know, an increase in food reactions. A lot of times people get problems later in life rather than early in life. There's a lot of different changes that happen um, uh, that aren't just physical. So some people, obviously, people feel better emotionally. Uh, a lot of times their fatigue, insomnia, you know, even depression starts to lift. They feel better. They have less body stress. Uh, energy and vitality is better. Uh, you know, the psychological well-being. But, you know, fasting was, if we're talking about fasting versus just detox, was really a spiritual practice way back, you know, centuries ago. Um, and it's so thought of that way and people do that at different, you know, different holidays and different religions, you know, are about fasting. So, you know, the key is how to, how to make the changes that we have. We use that as a, as a catalyst to make change. Um, so my, you know, one of my mottos in practice is lifestyle first, natural therapies next and drugs last. So uh, you always want to understand and get to the core of why a problem is existing rather than just just treat it. I mean, so, you know, to me, that's a higher level of healthcare uh, that you take on your own, you, you, you take for yourself. But especially if we want to keep our weight down, we have to look at the emotional connection. And, you know, it's again, it's all about, you know, the, cho you know, food is what we have the greatest choice over. And it matters what we put in our mouth. So that's what I realized when I did my first cleanse, it really shifted my attitude toward my body. I have one and only body, I got to treat it with love. And when I started doing that, I started getting better exercise, making sure I was sleeping better, learned how to deal with stress and emotions and all that. Um, there's a, 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 on our website and Thinkific, uh, where some of my courses are, there's a, a, a review on the five keys to staying healthy. To me, this is our lifestyle creates our health and how we look and feel as a result of how we live. One of my messages and so these are five areas that you can get into in depth. You know, if there's an area that you feel a little weaker in, that's an area to focus on. So, and I've been doing seasonal uh, approach. I do detoxes at different times of the year, often around the solstice and equinoxes. I've been doing groups there, you know, at my clinic and now online these last few years um, and paying attention to the seasonal approach. So uh, we have kind of a warm weather cleanse, but I'm going to tell you about the cool climate detox, which is uh, something that any of you can do where you are, especially over these uh, autumn and winter months. Um, so that's really important. And so cool climate detox course is basically, uh, you know, my suggestion to those of you who want to have a more guided experience. Now, this is uh, different. It's it, you, you can do this for a week or two, uh, you can do it around the holidays, you know, between holidays, after the holidays to get realigned. Uh, I usually do this in, in January uh, and I get, you know, kind of lightened up and start to 
you know, get away from, you know, flour, any flour and sugar and, you know, any, any junk. So, and I just really focus on vegetables. So the course is what I'm offering you today, which is three different classes, a lot of supportive materials, menu plans, recipes, uh, meditation, and a way to, you know, to interact with, you know, with us if you need. Um, so to me, uh, this is an important step and it's just really a, a guidance for you to do it because the more you learn and the more you apply the better you know to me the better results you get so you know normally i charge 149 or you know, sometimes a special 99 but uh, you know this is uh, an offer to you uh, for 59 dollars to do this course and you know that's for a period of time at least through, through these holidays and Angela is going to show you how to uh, use the Thinkific platform and how to access this. And, you know, the code you have is cool climate. So uh, I, I thank you for joining us. And I have time for a couple of questions. But here's the image for the cool climate detox. There's my email down below. And this is how to sign up. Um, so let's see here. All right. So is there any urgent questions right now before I have... Angela is going to just show you how to access the more materials than you have and how to access the cool climate uh, program. Well, you do have quite a few more questions here. You want to take some of these. Yeah. Someone said they've been doing a smoothie detox and noticed that it can feel so nutrient rich that it's almost makes her feel nauseous. Um, <laughs> like she doesn't, you know, what to eat. What, <laughs> what do you suggest? Well, especially, if, especially if you're trying to lose weight, you, you would make them thinner, you, you know, because I, you know, I grew up with my dad making milkshakes and smoothies and, you know, they were so dense because you put a lot of ice cream in them. So that didn't help me stay trim when I was little. Uh, and I'm a big smoothie maker too. So, and I, but I just add water. And then when I put it in my, in my container to take to the, to work, I'll add a, additional water to it. So yeah, you just have to thin it out a little bit. It sounds like, um, and there also may be something in there, some kind of powder or something you're using that might you know, not sit well with you, that that could be causing a little bit of nausea. Well, that's what someone else asked. What kind of protein do you suggest in the smoothie oh, cleanse? Question. Yeah, I, uh, for most people, uh, because there's such good quality vegan proteins now with pea and rice uh, and fl very flavorful and organic that though, and the, you know, not that expensive. So some people like whey, I don't really suggest soy protein. I, I don't think the processing is quite there yet. Um, but the rice and pea protein is there is, is one to consider. All right. Someone asked, can avocado be used as the fruit in the morning? Um, well, it's, I consider avocado more like a nut because it's got oil. It's, you know, it's, you know, but it's, you know, it, it hangs on a tree. So some people call it a fruit, but um, uh, you, you probably could do that or you could do that in there. But I'm trying to, I mean, that would be your oil for the day that you don't need to do, you know, as much extra oil. Oh, I didn't mention also during the detox diet, you make a little what's called better butter. And it's, uh, it's basically a little bit of or ideally organic butter with a little flax oil or olive oil. Uh, you let the butter get room temperature, like be able, like a, one stick of butter, a quarter pound of butter with a quarter cup of oil, and then you mat, you mix it all together, and it's kind of a very flavorful way to put on your vegetables. So that's a way to get your oils in. All right, someone has two questions here. Can you use freshly delivery fresh delivery plans to detox? And if you do lose weight on a detox, will you gain the weight back after you start eating protein again? Uh, not necessarily, but do, people do gain the weight back when they go back to what they were eating before, because your body is a result of whatever you've been doing. And so the idea, really the big picture the idea here is that the detox is used for you to transition from, from point A to point B. It's kind of what I call transformational medicine. When you start, you're at point A, that's where you're at. The question is, where do you want to be? So if you, you know, you get some results there and, you know, most people who've done diets, who've worked with their weight, you know, including myself, you know, when you go back and start eating everything again, you're going to end up with the same body, maybe with an extra pound even. So, um, you know, you really want to uh, pay attention to that and, you know, kind of make the changes you have, use, use detox to make a change in, in your habits and, 
uh, you know, in your health, really. And someone asked, what about the warm weather detox? Warm weather detox uh, could be a detox diet as well, but that's when you can do more juices. You can do more fresh, fresh veggie juices, master cleanse. Uh, so, you know, that typically, uh, because, you know, when you don't eat food, food is your, you know, realize one of the number one ideas about nutrition is food is your body's fuel. You're feeling, you know, it's like, you know, it's like you're a train going down, choo-choo down the track and you have to have that fuel getting in there. So if you're not getting, you know, you get warmer, the idea of seasonal eating is that when it's hot outside, you can eat foods that are cooling, more cooling fruit, more salads. When it's cold outside, you need food, your diet that's more heating. And so that's the difference in the two approaches. Someone asked, when does the cool climate detox start? It starts anytime it's set up to do it. Now that won't, that, I won't be live with you. It's, it's a guided it's a guided course that uh, you know I'm there with you to present the material and to give you your ideas and options. Um, so it's our, I think it starts now. You're going to show people how to how to get into it, Angela, and show people about Thinkific a little bit. Sure, I can do that. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to participate in the cool climate detox, I will. Yeah, or just see about what Thinkific and what's there. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you go to elsenhaasmd.thinkific.com, this is where you will land, and it shows all the different courses that Dr. Haas has available, and the first one here is the Cool Climate Detox, and you click on that, and then when you click here to register, you will see the registration, and there are these faint little yellow words right here that say, have a coupon. <laughs> So you'll click that and then you'll type in the cool climate and then click apply and then enroll. And then you say, now you can begin. So then you click start learning. And then this is what you'll see when you're on the inside of the class, which is very different than it looks on the outside, just on the landing page. Inside the class, you'll have information about um, before the class, each of the different lessons are here, and you'll see the little green circle. That's where you can expand. So you can get 10, 10 tips here for healthy detox. There are a lot of support materials. You see, when I open that up, here's all the support materials you have. Uh, the welcome, here's the detox diet um, that Dr. Haas was describing. There's a suggested shopping list, um, suggested supplements that Dr. Haas went through briefly. You have all the details. You have a make a plan form, which definitely helps you identify what you're going to do and make a commitment and sign it. This really helps when you're doing it. And the hydration helper is also just a little way you can check off how much water you're drinking during the day. And you also have something that you can keep track of what you're doing. Dr. Haas suggests, you know, journaling, but here's a just quick way you can check off things each day to see your progress and see what you're up to. Then here are some of the different items that he showed you in the slideshow, the smoothie plan and the juice plan and the master cleanse um, with notes and with the recipe there. Then in the first lesson, you will get um, the video, you have an audio, and you get to see the slides so that you can go through everything that Dr. Haas um, is teaching you for each of these weeks. So you can do uh, lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and then there's also some additional resources that can help you. Technology is so cool. All right. Well, I'm excited for all of you. I'm th I thank you all for joining us. Can may I ask a quick question? Can we start this in December? You could start in December, January. You know, we thought maybe a lot of people would do it in January. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I hope this all helps you all. And, uh, you know, we're here and I'll be doing a number of courses. I'm excited about my evolutionary medicine course next year. Um, we're, you know, coming soon. And uh, we'll tell you about that. Uh, and hopefully most of you are signed up for uh, my, our newsletter, my, you know, my monthly newsletter. So you keep up to date what's going on. And it's all about keeping our health together, get, uh, you know, getting healthier as we age, saying, keeping our vitality up, keeping our skin looking good, our, our body feeling good. And to me, I think the detox process and just paying attention to what we're putting in our bodies is really important. So 
Thank you all for joining us today. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.